What's up guys, hope you are having a great day and in the next few episodes I want to focus on JavaScript. And in this video I want to focus on setting up our environment where we are going to work in. Since we're going to focus on the client side of JavaScript, we don't need a lot to start off. You can build JavaScript web applications in anything you want. It doesn't matter which operating system you're using. So you could use Mac, Windows, Linux or whatever you want. The first thing that we need is a code editor. And I do have a couple of videos about how to install a code editor. But for this episode, I want to focus on installing Visual Studio Code. What I recommend you to do is to open a new browser, search for Visual Studio Code, and you can see the official website of Visual Studio Code is, well, the first option, so let's click on it. And Visual Studio Code is an open source code editor. And what I want to do is to click on download, and while well, you could choose whatever operating system you are using, and I'm using a Mac, so let me download the Mac version. I will pause the video for a second and I'll be back when the download is done. Whenever the download is done, let's click on it. And if you're using a different operating system, it might take a couple other steps to actually install Visual Studio Code. Now, whenever you're done installing, let's double click on it. Well, it is an app from the internet, so let's click on open. And you can see that a new untitled file just has been opened. We could also change the layout that we have on the screen. On a Mac, let's go to code. Let's click on preferences and let's click on settings. The path that we just have followed might be different for you if you have a different operating system. But what you can do right here is to go search for your preferences. And what we could do is to change our preferences. So let's say that we want our auto save to be on. Let's change it to, well, whatever you want, after delay, on focus change or on windows change. I will keep it as default. We can change the font size, the delay, the font family, and so on. And if we scroll down, there are way more options. And right now, for me, the word wrap is on. And I recommend you to do that. So whenever you're writing a long sentence, it will cut it off when it's at the end of the page and it will go in the line below. Another fun thing to do is to change your background. So let's say that you don't like dark mode. Go back to code, preferences, and color theme again. And these are all the different color themes that you could use. So if we choose red, well, this is something I don't prefer. Let's change it back to Kimball dark. And well, you should just choose whatever color theme you'd like to use. I will just go with the default color of Visual Studio. What I want to do right now is to add a second extension. And this one is called Live Server. And it is the first one because, well, you can see the downloads that it has. There are like 5.5 million, so that's actually insane. But what this basically does is opening a regular HTML5 web page on our local host instead of right clicking on a file and saying that you want to open it in a browser. It also gives us auto load which is an awesome feature because whenever we save our page, we do not need to refresh the browser anymore because this will be done automatically. Well, mine is already installed. So let's move on with the third extension, which is called bracket pair colorizer. And it's the first one as well. Let me actually zoom in a little bit. And well, mine is installed already because I haven't, I actually have deleted my Visual Studio, but I haven't deleted the entire package. So my plugins will still be available for me. And what this basically does is colorizing matching brackets and parentheses. And you might probably think that this is not necessary, but well, if we scroll down, if we look at, well, our JSON script right here, it is pretty difficult to detect which opening bracket pairs the closing bracket. And if we even go to the browser again, Let's search for JavaScript code example. Let me just open the W3 schools and let's click on this one. Well, this doesn't look difficult. Well, let me go back. You can see that it is pretty easy to make mistakes with brackets and parentheses. So therefore I always recommend you to use a bracket pair colorizer. The last extension that I want to add is called 
ES6 code snippets. And it's well called JavaScript ES6 code snippets. And what this does is basically including snippets of modern ES6 JavaScript, which we will be writing in. So we'll install it, and that's the last extension that we need. What I want to do right now is to set up a folder on our desktop. So let me open the desktop. Let's create a new file, and I will call it JS for Beginners. You can actually place this folder wherever you want. I prefer to use it on my desktop because it's easy to access it. Now let's open Visual Studio Code again. Let's remove all the extensions that we have. And what I recommend you to do right now is to just click on your folder and let's paste it right inside Visual Studio. Inside our JS for Beginners folder that we have in our Explorer, we could click on the first icon. So we want to create a new file and let's call this one index.html. Let me zoom in again. Let me close off my Git repository. And like I said before, Emmet is installed in Visual Studio Code. So if we write down doc and hit tab, you can see that our HTML structure is automatically created for us. This can also be done with other HTML elements. So let's write down h1 and hit tab and our h1 has been created. So let's say hello world. And on the line below, we could create a h2 and say, this is my course. Actually, the same thing can be done for IDs and classes. So let's say we want a diff punctuation mark. So a class of class. And our div has been created with a class. If you have created web pages before, you know that if you go back to our folder, so let's open it, right click on the file, click on open with, and let's say Google Chrome. The page will be opened in Chrome, but since we have installed Live Server, we could basically go back. So let's close off the Chrome. Let's go to the file that we have. Let's right click on it and let's click on Open with Live Server. And while you need to enable your port, the local port is 5500 and just click on Don't Show again. Now, let's make this one smaller. And let's fit it with our code editor. So let me put my code editor to the left and my browser to the right. And if we want to change Hello World to Hello Dari, let's save it. You can see that Hello World has been changed to Hello Dari without refreshing the browser. And that's because we have Live Server installed on our Visual Studio Code. This was it for the video about setting up everything for the next few episodes about JavaScript. And I hope that I gave you a clear overview of what you could do with JavaScript and Visual Studio Code. If you do enjoy my content and you want to see more, leave this video a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button.